ionization energy is the amount of energy that you actually put in to remove one electron from the outermost shell of the atoms. And the first ionization energy means that you start taking the first electron from the outermost shell of the atom and you have to spend this amount of energy. So the first ionization energy means that you rem you actually taking out one mole of the electrons from one mole of atoms in a gaseous state to form one mole of the one positive ions. So it is an for in a gaseous state again. So you have an electron atom here in the ground state, and for example, it has one shell only and two electrons in that shell. So it stop taking one out to change it to the ion, for example. So next, go to the next step of the class. Okay, I'll give you an example. In the case of, for example, we have uh, magnesium, so Mg. Okay, in Mg, um, actually has 12 uh, electrons in the ground state. So let's see what happens. So if this is the nucleus and the first shell, second and the third shell has it has some electrons on the outermost shell too so as you can see this is a diagram electronic configuration of the magnesium in a ground state it means 12 electrons it has and 12 protons <coughs> excuse me so if the first ionization energy we remove one electron from it so one mole electron and this is the first ionization energy. So this, this one more electron that we take out is usually from the outermost shell, it's not from the in the shell inside. So once we move in, the further we go in, we can we can take more electrons out. The first taken, the second taken, so we have to go to the next shell. Every time we get closer to the nucleus, this amount of energy that we have to spend for ionization, it becomes higher. You have to bury this one into mine. So this one changes into iron of the magnesium because we have taken out only one electron, so it appears like this. One shell, second, and the third shell. So look how it looks like without this bracket. So this is the structure, electronic configuration. So one electron, one mole electron is taken out by the, through the first ionization energy from the outermost shell. So now the outermost shell, instead of two electrons, it has only one electron. And you see the other uh, electrons are still there. So in order to show this is an ion we put in this bracket, and after that, we put plus because it has lost only one electron. So that's how the M, it becomes Mg plus. So this is the first ionization energy. How, do I sh how can I represent this as an equation? This is like this. So Mg should be in a gaseous state, magnesium, and then changes during the first ionization energy and changes into magnesium uh, one plus. Um, plus one electron which is lost during this ionization and this one also should be in the gaseous state. So this is the first ionization energy, first ionization energy that we put in. Huh? We put in. So as you can see we have this is the first ionization energy. So this is the Mg in a gaseous state. It has changed into the Mg uh, ion, positive ion in the gaseous state again. So once you removed one electron, we can continue removing more electrons from it. So it, it is called as a successive ionization energy. So again, a second electron, which is removed from the outermost shell, it's called the second ionization energy. So in order to do that, so how do I draw this one? So this is the first one. Now this Mg positive changes into the Mg positive can be changed into Mg2 positive because now another electron it is lost from it. So we take out another one electron 
as you can see and what we have here we have only this last auto mode shell is empty so i can only simply remove it now it doesn't have any more and just can put it in bracket and then right here two plus because two electrons two mole electrons are lost from this um mg positive ion so this is the second time that we have removed the uh, electron from it so this is called as a second ionization energy now if i want to sh go to the further and remove another electron from it i have to remove the electron now from the shell which is closer to the nucleus so it means that we need more energy to put in to invest more energy so it is harder for us to remove one electron from the uh, mg2 plus now uh, so when it means that if i measure the amount of energy needed every time so it is a very abrupt uh, change or very sudden change and increase in the energy that i have to put in to re for ionization from the uh, that shell to the next shell so if you measure this one this one required the similar or a little bit this one higher but not so much difference they should be uh, if you put them on the graph you see that they are on a uh, on a line last line but uh, this one suddenly when you shift to the next shell here for the third ionization energy this third ionization energy because you are removing electron from closer the shell which is closer to the nucleus it will show an abrupt change into the amount of energy needed so you see this is very sharp uh, line like this if you put them on the graph you see that there is a too much change it's a sudden increase into the ionization energy level let me first write the equation for this one if i want to write the equation this one I, I don't write mg so the first ionization energy for the mg becomes mg in the gaseous state and changes into mg plus uh, again in the gaseous state plus one electron which is lost from it the second one now you remove electron uh, second ionization energy you remove electron from this one further you go further so it becomes mg plus in the gaseous state it changes into mg2 plus in the gaseous state plus one electron another electron is lost here so if you go to the third ionization energy so how does it look like it becomes mg this time two plus in a gaseous state it changes into mg3 plus in a gaseous state plus e minus and it goes on like that so this is called a certain this is called a successive ionization energy So I repeat again. So um, usually the level of the ionization like first, second, or third, it equals or the same as the charge on the ion which is produced on the other side. So first ionization energy gives you a magnesium ion with a one positive charge. And the second one, it gives you magnesium with a two positive charge. And the third one with a three positive charge. And the fourth ionization gives you a magnesium with a for positive charge and it goes on like this so we should now know what are those factors that may affect the ionization energy i write like this ionization energy what actually affects this um, energy that we need to put in to remove the one mole of electron from the one mole of atoms and so it's first is the distance as i said is the distance between nucleus and the outermost electrons outermost electrons which is this distance is called as atomic radius 
atomic radius. So this is very important and it defines how much uh, energy changes. So if the, at the bigger the atomic radius, if the atomic radius increases, it gets bigger and bigger. So then the amount of the force of attraction between the nucleus and the electrons, of course, decreases. So you need less ionization energy. So once this distance becomes bigger, this is a smaller and this is bigger. So the bigger it is, so you need to put more energy to do the ionization. The next one, the second factor which affects the ionization energy is the charge, charge on the nucleus. It means that the greater the number of the protons, if the protons are higher, the greater the number of the protons, so then what happens? Because the uh, force of attraction between the nucleus and the outer electrons increases, so we have higher ionization energy. This is number of protons, or proton number. The next one, the next factor is that affects it is the shielding effect. Shielding effect. It means that once we have, there are more shells, the more shells around the nucleus, more shell, the more shell we have, then the force of the attraction of course, between the uh, nucleus and the electrons decreases. So what happens to the ionization energy? It drops. So ionization energy would be less if we have more shells because of the shielding effect, because of the electrons that repel each other. As the electrons in the outer shell are repelled by the electrons in the inner shells. This is shielding effect, which reduces the attraction between electrons and the nucleus. Sometimes if you bring the ionization energies, as you can see on the graph, we can um, guess something about how electrons are arranged in the atoms, as I said. So if you look at this graph, there are two things that this graph tells you. It means that there is a gradual increase in the IE as we remove the first six electrons. And because each time we remove an outer electron, the uh, of course, the remaining uh, electrons in the outer shell are pulled slightly closer to the nucleus. This means greater attraction between outer electrons and the nucleus, which causes the IE to gradually increase. So this is a gradual increase. Gradual. But here we have a massive increase a line with a very sharp slope. So this massive increase in the ionization energy graph um, shows that the seventh electron, for example here, the seventh, like one, two, three, four, five, six, shows that the, uh, this is a six, sorry, it's a six electron, this one, uh, I think, yes, that, that's a six electron, uh, is removed, actually it can be explained by looking at the electron uh, configuration. Um, the first thing is that, okay, one, two, three, four, five. Here, five, after removing five electrons, we have a massive increase. It means now we are going to the next shell. So this is the outermost shell of that atom, which contains only five electrons. What we can understand from this is that what element is this? Type of the element can be easily guessed. If you look at the periodic table, you will easily understand which element this is. For example, that in the question, let me ask you, let me tell you that which atom this is or which element. And uh, by knowing that this element is in the, um, for example, in the second period. So if it is in the second period, it means that 
um, the atom can be nitrogen because it has seven electrons and this is how the electron configuration is so one two three four one two three four five six and seven yeah so one two three four five so it has five electrons as you can see one two three four five electrons in the outermost shell and then uh, as it they said that it is on the uh, in the second period uh, so it means that second period so it means I should be nitrogen with these seven electrons so look at this question exam exam type question is a graph shows the facts first six ionization energies for an element in the period three which element this is so what you have to do you look at the graph we have ionization energy which is in kilojoules per mole and in the uh, on the x axis we have ionization numbers or the level and it is the first second third fourth fifth and the sixth ionization ionization and this is ionization energy the amount of energy that we put to remove electrons from the outermost shell so how many i have to have first to look at the straight line this one that the gradual increase into the amount of energy so it means this shows that uh, there are one two three four electrons in the outermost shell because after that we have a sudden change and increase so now we are moving to the next shell so it means that this element that has four electrons on the outermost shell but still there are one more shells inside and this is the period three so the third period means that they have three shells there are three shells there and now they are asking to us to tell which uh, element this is so we have four here one two here okay. this is a 14 actually without even counting that we can just look at the period three and go to the group number which is four because the number of the electrons on the outermost shell shows the group number so you see on the first second third and the fourth group and the third period this is a silicon the element should be silicon now there are something else that we need to know is about how this amount of energy or ionization ch energy changes when you move down a group <laughs> for example lithium sodium potassium or or in the same group Huh? They are all the same group, like group one. So we go down the group and down the column in the, ter in the periodic table. What happens to ionization energy? Actually, this ionization, when you move down the group, actually get less, I mean, decreases. And the reason is that first, the, atom, the atomic radius becomes bigger and bigger and bigger when you go down the group. So also another one is that the increase of the energy levels down the group uh, because of the shelling. There is a shelling effect. There are more shells between the last electron and also the nucleus. So because of the shelling effect. So when you go down the group, this energy becomes less because you need to put more, less effort to, and less energy to remove this one electron from the shell. Now we want to know what happens when we move across uh, or along the one period. This is the uh, actually at atoms that we can find in the first period, as you can see. The first one is a lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and neon. And this is the, how many at the atomic number or how many electrons or protons they have. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10 for a neon. And this is the amount of the energy for ionization, which is i.e. in kilogram per mole and now you see this pattern how actually it is changing <laughs> actually one thing that you have to notice generally um, there is an increase from the left to the right side of a uh, periodic table when you move um, actually in the uh, period from the left to the right there is an increase in i.e. Overall, okay, because uh, the the atomic radius radius 
is getting smaller and smaller when we move to the right side of the periodic table. So, so we need more energy to put in to remove electrons from the uh, atoms. The other one is the nucleus charge. Nucleus charge actually is changing and it is getting increased. So if it is increasing, so the amount of energy that you have to put in, it becomes more. Because the nucleus charge means that we have more protons than a lot of protons. The number of the protons are increasing, but the uh, shell number stays the same. So all of these may cause more attraction between outer electrons and the nucleus, so ionization energy will overall generally increase. But there are some something in this graph, even if you look, that the barn and oxygen in this graph are not following this rule and the pattern, which actually exists here. <clears throat> so they, if they were not here, lithium, barium, barn, carbon, they would just show an increase. But there is a drop in the energy amount that we, for ionization where we reach to the um, barn and oxygen. <clears throat> barn is in the third group. And this one, oxygen, is in the six. Okay, so we know that. Actually, in order to explain this, we have to look at the subshells that are involved. So let's see. Um, it is the electronic configuration of the last, the outermost shell for each of these lithium, beryllium, and boron. Lithium is 1s2, 2s1. I just write the last one, the last shell. Beryllium is 2s2. Barn is 2s2, 2p1. So when we are removing electron the first ionization, for the first ionization, we remove for lithium um, electron from the uh, S orbital in the second shell. And for the beryllium, we are removing one electron from the S orbital again, so which is in the S shell. But in the bar end, we are removing electron from the P orbital in the second shell. So what is happening here is that we know P, <coughs> P orbital energy is a little bit higher than the um, S orbital, uh, and that's why energy level drops when in the ionization energy because we need less energy to remove one electron from the p orbital compared to the s orbital that is the reason in the next uh, period the same pattern we have for the next period so another example like nitrogen and oxygen so let's look out into the uh, orbitals again and see what is happening um, actually, this is the electron configuration for the nitrogen. This is for oxygen. 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. So this is the first shell. This is the second shell orbitals. So let's see. When we remove electrons, we are removing from this second shell for both of them and for both of them from the p orbitals. But let's, let's, let's look at the arrangement of the electrons into the each p orbitals for nitrogen and oxygen. You know that the p orbitals, they are three, actually it's three, P orbitals, three P orbitals we have in here, we show it by these boxes and with these arrows you remember. So for nitrogen, this is how they are located. First, we are filled up with a single um, electrons, uh, all in the same direction. Then when you want to pair up, you have to put in the opposite direction, the second pair. So we have here single orbitals, okay, in the, for the L. So, and for here we have, paired electrons. The paired electrons, because they are easy to remove, because this one, they have similar charges, and they naturally, they have, they repel each other. So it is easy for us to separate that. So for each one, this one, we need less energy. <coughs> we need less energy here. The, the paired electrons, that repel each other, you can see here. So um, it takes less energy to remove one of these electrons compared to the separated orbitals, like this one. As they repel, so it is easy for us to remove this one. Then you see there is a drop again into the 
um, pattern. You can see the similar pattern also in the third period. We have sodium magnesium, and again, in the group three, we have a drop in aluminum uh, ionization energy. Then we go to silicon and then phosphorus, and again, a drop in the sixth group uh, element, which is sul um, sulfur, and then again, increase in for the chlorine and then argon. So all with the same reasons, you have to look at the orbitals and how the electrons are placed there. We have to see which electrons we are taking out from, from which orbital. 